Can you do a quick one, two, three for me, please? Um, seven, four, two. Perfect. And then Howard, please. One, two, three. Yours might be a little bit higher, Howard. Tom's um, really low. Um, if you're able to, is there any way you're able to back away from the computer or the mic just a bit? Right there, I can put the mic a little bit further back. Just try there. And then is that a bit? Is that a bit better? Yeah, it is. And then also though, if you're able to back away a little bit from the uh, camera, I can't. Uh, ah, wait there. Maybe I can put the camera back a little bit. Is that better? That helps a bit. Um, and I've yeah. just put the mic back a little bit more as well. Okay. But my assumption is you're okay with going first, Howard? Uh, yeah. Can I just um, just make sure I've got everything ready? Uh, screen share. Screen share would be advanced and it would be video. Or would it be files? Yeah, advanced video. And I look in. Oh, that's right. Last thing. Guy computer. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just t uh, testing. That's going on there. No problem. Okay, and then stop share. And that's if I need it. Okay, I think I think I'm ready. Cool. All right. Well, then I'm going to start the stream, and we'll just see if the connection is good. It virtually always is, but just to be safe, we'll give it 30 seconds or so just for me to look. And then after that, I will go on with a cold open and I'll say, hey, everybody, today we're debating whether or not there's evidence for intelligent design. And we're starting right now. And then I'll go with Howard's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us, Howard. The floor is all yours. And at that point, you can pick it up and run with that ball. Ooh -wee. Thank you. My pleasure. This will be fun. And then, yeah, let me know when you're going to pop it into the screen share once you do start your speech, because then I can do it. I can take care of that on my side. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. I'm pretty much straight away going to screen share. Cool. As long as you wait until your speech officially starts. Yeah, of course. Thank, Thank you. you. And one last little adjustment here in the picture. Cool. All right. Here I go with that cold open. Thanks for being here, guys. This is always fun. And going in three, two, one, ready, set, here I go. Hey everybody, today we're debating whether or not, <clears throat> that's right, I have my mic set. What I'm going to do instead is, I've got a, sorry, it's embarrassing, I forgot to unplug. How you doing, Tom? Pretty good. Awesome. Happy New Year. This is special. You guys are like brothers. Is that true? No. Not even a little bit? You need, you need a new catchphrase. Howard, would you be excited to be Tom's mother? <laughs> Brother from another mother. That's right. I want you to yeah. say that in the stream tonight. All right. So, if, uh, he's, if, he's, if he's polite. You just wait until... The sound's going off a little bit. Is it me or you? What? I've just James his uh, voice went off. Perfect. Okay, now we're set. Here I go. Let me wow. just make sure that my mic is chill and normal. Is here I go in three, two, one, ready, set. Here I go. Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not there's evidence for intelligent design, and we are starting right now. With Howard's opening statement, thanks so much for being with us, Howard. The floor is all yours.
Thank you, James. Uh, thank you for being here, Tom. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Let's see how this uh, goes. This is my first time presenting this. I'm testing this on you guys. Hold on it's one okay sec. I, I just okay want to I... see if we can get rid of this lag. I have a little bit of lag on the video that I didn't see earlier. So let me work on this. And we might have to... I'm just trying to get it to catch up because it's for some reason slow. So we might have to actually do a second start. So pardon that delay, but no problem. let me see if it looks like it's on. If it's caught up yet. looks close the, the floor is all yours thank you james and uh thank you for having me um is it okay if i share my screen it is okay is that full screen for everybody and it's set right looks now close the, awesome the floor is all yours so I would like to take a look. Thank I'd you, like to take and, everybody uh, to look into other dimensions. Thank you for having me. As um, we're talking about okay intelligent design being is. from a higher dimension, okay. we cannot perceive the majority of the electromagnetic is that full spectrum. Full screen for everybody. So, uh, and can you mute set yourself, please, right Tom? Now. One sec. Um, trying to so, find. Um, I get an echo. So. I would like should to I take a look. Or I start? I'd like to take everybody. One sec. To can you pause for a second? I'll try to echo, but As let's we're talking about intelligent screen. design being there we go. from a high. There we go. Fixed it. Go ahead. You got it. Go ahead, Howard. Cool. Um, so even though we can't see into higher dimensions, uh, we can see um, a lot of magic in numbers, and um, we can also see from experience that nobody can make a watch uh, randomly throughout nature we can see that there's a design um encoded into the creation even of the human cell uh, going from one to two to four to eight um, we also see in history the ancients uh, that built amazing constructions were also obsessed with um the sacred geometry where we can see uh, phi throughout nature. And we can also see the numbers in a 3D matrix grid pattern form a torus donut by Earth's magnetic field, possibly being how the Bible and the Holy, uh, the Quran uh, describe, um, maybe the Holy Spirit. So we see that numbers are um, abstract concepts of uh, quantity, but concepts require a mind and uh, we also see a lot of beauty so it suggests that this is the way god thinks the creator um the secular worldview cannot account for existence and the properties of numbers and when we look at geometry we also see that there's a uh, magic uh, in the numbers and the geometry not because we've decided but because it has to be and we see that nine it rhymes with divine possibly because it's uh, from a higher dimension uh, and it holds all of the numbers. And when we reduce numbers, we find that we can get everything from nine and nothing from nine simultaneously. I'll explain as best as I can. When we add all of the digits from one to eight, we get 36. Three and six, when added together, make nine. So nine is all digits and at the same it's no digits because as tom's probably heard before nine can also equal nothing so when we see 360 degrees the zero is nothing which is nine and the three and six is nine when we look at the face of a clock and go clockwise we can add up the digits and we keep coming back to the same numbers and we can also do it when we put them in a different order, known as vortex math. Vortex being like a, a torus field on a two dimensional plane, um, because like I said, when we're looking at higher dimensions, 
we have to look at the simplified kind of shadow. So when we double eight, we get 16. 16 is one plus six, which is seven. So you'll see that we go around the, the numbers in a, in a kind of an eight form, form, like the infinity, the eight. It just keeps going around and round. And no matter how many numbers you double, it'll keep going round in the same direction for infinity. Sorry, the video is a bit out of time. I've just made it today. But yeah, we'll always get one, two, four, eight, seven, five in that order or vice versa if we do negative, which shows that three, six and nine never work. But that's why they're known as being from a higher dimension. They manage while the other numbers do all the work, which tells us that they're special, which we'll look more into in a minute. The problem is that a lot of people worship numbers and parts of creation rather than worshiping the source of the intelligent design and the whole of the creation. We see fractals in math and we also see them in the physical world. It means that we can see a miniature version um, no matter how far we go down. The physical world contains fractals. The secular worldview cannot account for why the physical universe obeys mathematics. The universe is controlled by the mind of the creator. It's his simulation. Now, when we see a positive to negative um, line and we want to talk about something from a higher dimension, we have to add another axis, which would be imaginary, but we can um, give them the numeric value uh, like the Mandelbrot set did to calculate uh, this pattern, one of many, which is a fractal pattern that is, um, again, to infinity. We can zoom in or zoom out for infinity. It's never ending. So that imagine the processing power needed to come up with designs like this. Designs like we see in snowflakes, which form naturally. No two are the same, like an iris or a fingerprint. All perfectly symmetrical, fractal and beautiful. When we look at um, number sequences in the, the concept math, um, we can see that there's a zero in the first zero in the pi sequence on the 33rd place, which gives some credit to the story of Jesus Christ. Uh, resurrecting on the 33rd year. Um, we also see many other patterns in Pi, which I recommend people take a screenshot. Um, I'm going to be making another video uh, further ahead uh, where I'll go into more description. But this is just to give a bit of credit to what I'm about to show everybody. If you take a mathematic table and reduce the numbers to the digital root and then choose a color for each number, I've chosen yellow for number one. And then just like a spirograph, or like we did for the Mandelbrot set, we need to mirror to see more of the higher dimensional information. So as we mirror the pixels that we've highlighted for the number one from the mathematic table, we'll see a pattern emerge. Now, excuse the flash imagery. Like I said, I'm gonna have to uh, play with the speeds a little bit when I do the proper video. But you'll get the image now for number one. And this is just 10 times 10. The more we calculate, the more we can see. And it's forever symmetrical. It's not just symmetrical, but we see beautiful patterns like circles. We see flowers. We see uh, squares. And we see crosses. A little bit like the pharmacy sign chemist sign as i say i'm sorry about the speed i'll be making the mastered version for my channel hopefully in the next week or two so we can see there's a different pattern for every number so technically we're looking into a different dimension but we're using a 2d drawing to visualize the electromagnetic uh, properties that we see throughout nature. Here's a circle and nine, as we said, is divine. It's like a net 
And this, as we go out, remains a net, like a grid, like a matrix, which is quite interesting. We can also mix numbers to give a stronger pattern and different patterns. Here we see uh, the pharmacy logo a bit strengthened with more details when we mix eight, four, and six. You can use any color you want. Uh, when we see three, six, nine, we don't just see the matrix, the grid. We now see more of a cage. We see that three, six, and nine work together. And I've just put my own birthday to show people even in one color, you can get beautiful patterns because they all work together. The same applies when we take a division table. One divided by one, two divided by one. Um, we get different numbers. When the number's divided by itself, we obviously get number one. On each side, we get different results. It's a bit more difficult to reduce, but as I say, take a screenshot from um, as many as screenshots as you can, and you can try this for yourselves. When we take the horizontal pattern, which is mirroring the numbers from the left side to the right, and then mirroring it round, we get different pattern. Likewise, when we mirror the numbers from the right side, we get a different pattern. When we mix the two positions of the numbers from both sides, we get new characters with arms and legs. And then when we reduce those numbers, we get a completely different flower, quite advanced compared to the earlier ones. When we mix the flower with the uh, characters, which is putting the fourth and fifth stages, the positions of numbers together, we get even stronger characters. And when we see the sixth stage of number nine, and the sixth stage of 369, we're back with the grid the, and the cage. Uh, we see the sixth stage of one looking like it's all going to the center point. And we also see the seventh stage, which is like the seven days of creation, the seventh day was to rest, where uh, the numbers that didn't change position throughout all the six stages um, remain the same. They give a completely fixed pattern. Okay. So when we Less zoom out, Thank you. Nearly done. When we zoom out, um, we can see more details and they're more intricate. Uh, just like zooming in on a CGI fractal pattern, the more numbers you calculate equals the more complexity. The results highlight pixels to show characteristics that we see throughout the creation. We can see inspiration for logos, board games, cartoons and video ca game characters, etc. This is, um, to me, evidence for intelligent design. And as I say, what inspires all of our video games, board games. And um, it's something that we see in the concept of math and new numbers. And like I said, we see it throughout nature. And that tells me that the earth is contained by um, the, the, our, what we call our universe is contained, all wrapped together. And there's never an overlapping because uh, the, just like the phi sequence, it's um, perfectly distrib distributed. So we always see symmetry. And sometimes it might be our imagination like pareidolia, but other times it looks too certain to, um, to be, to deny mm -hmm. that we're looking at intelligent design. Thank you very much. Fine. Thank you very much for that opening. And we're going to kick it over to T-Jump for his opening as well. But first, want to say, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, want to say welcome no matter what walk of life you're from. We are glad that you are here. And also, Modern Day Debate is a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. And by that, I mean neutral moderation and neutral content. Every video here is a debate. And don't forget to hit subscribe as we have many more debates coming up. You don't want to miss them. So hit that subscribe button right now. And with that, thanks very much, Tom. The floor is all yours for your opening. <laughs> okay. So uh, apparently Howard thinks numbers have pretty patterns. Therefore, they must be designed. I guess that's his argument. Uh, no, numbers are literally increments. One, two, three, four. Anything that is in, in increments will have a pattern. And you can make any of these sets subsequent patterns that he's talking about from anything that has a sequence to it it's just it's basic information theory i don't know why that why he thinks this is magic um and so i don't i don't really know what else to respond to like no there are some snowflakes that are identical pi is literally random that's the point of the the increments of pi there's not a pattern in it. he got a bunch of factual things wrong but his argument just seems to be he sees pretty patterns and numbers therefore design i don't i don't i don't there's no like logical inference there 
and I'll end there. You got it. We're going to jump into the open con. <clears throat> We're going to jump into the open conversation, folks. If you happen to have a question, feel free to fire it into the old live chat. If you tag me with at modern day debate, that makes it easier for me to see your questions in the live chat here on YouTube. And Super Chat also allows you to ask a question, which goes to the top of the list as we read those first. And with that, thank you very much, gentlemen. The floor is all yours. Thank do you, James. Do you have an argument? Like, can you give like a premise, premise, conclusion of why you think pretty patterns and numbers indicate design? Well, like I showed in the video, um, and I can screen share again later. Uh, I don't. I do not. Do not wish to just, see that again. Just the one image of um, this pie sequence which is um, totally not random. It's uh, got lots of patterns in it, and it shows you that there's, um, there's a life uh, of Pi, as the movie says, there's a story. Just like in Phi, um, which I can prepare more evidence for another debate in the future, where I'll look more at Phi, uh, P-H-I for people out there that can't hear the difference. But today I was looking at pi and looking at multiplication and looking at division. And wait, wait, so my question was, is, do you have a syllogism of why you think pretty numbers, pretty patterns in numbers equals design? That's the part I'm looking for. Because we see fractals and other patterns in the concept, conceptual math and the physical world. And there's no reason to see <laughs> the same thing in the physical world uh, as we do in numbers what um, we do there's there's literally a deterministic reason for that it's because numbers describe reality so it's like saying why is the sky blue if i say the sky is blue it's almost like the sentence describes reality yes that's how words work um but that's not that didn't answer my question my question was is okay so there's a pattern you see pretty pattern how do you go from you see pretty pattern to designer that's the that's the question yeah sure uh, i just wanted to add what i was saying before to make sure i finished what i was saying so when i watched a debate uh, with you and that taylor v um you were saying that the current scientific consensus is that the first rna molecules randomly came together and happened to be the the right kind of combination that would randomly reproduce itself and then start to grab nucleotides and randomly put them in the one in a billion right order uh, i'm paraphrasing uh, to reproduce itself and that ribosomes evolved thousands to millions of years later also randomly and that we're supposed to just believe that everything's random and chance when in reality okay so i had i sp asked you a specific question do you I'll have an argument what is your yes. premise premise what is the argument i'm trying to make it if you don't interrupt me it'll be easier for people to follow so well, no, where it's, it's, you... i can't follow okay. it because you're not making the argument what is the argument so i mean like premise premise conclusion if X, if i can then, answer my why? way tom if i can answer my way we'll, we'll have one a much thing. smoother conversation one. one thing i i understand tom or uh howard that you might want to be able to unpack like you might want to be able to give the support for each premise before having each premise attacked. So we can give you extra time to unpack it, but maybe first just to be, so it's as clear as possible for Tom and the audience is if you're willing to maybe put it in a sh very short, broad version, like the kind of the, uh, just the pith of it. And then after that, we can give you a chance to unpack it, but that way it, it like you could say, we maybe we'll give you a chance to put the skeleton out and then we'll give you a chance to put the, the muscle on the skeleton after. Is that, is that okay? I've pretty much put it out already. Uh, so the whole point that I was trying to make um, was that in reality, we don't see anything random, not in the mathematics, nor in the physical world. We <sighs> even can look microscopically into a cell and see different molecular machines like the bacterial uh, phalagum, if I'm pronouncing it, phalagum. Flagellum, uh, which are necessary flagellum, for transport. But this Thank doesn't you, answer phalagellum. the question. Flagellum. It's the, the question was, is how do you get from pretty patterns, conclusion, God? So, so what we need is, we see this, therefore this, yeah. conclusion, God. This is what I'm looking for. You simply say, we do see lots of random things in nature. Literally, the consensus in physics is randomness is a force in nature. So we do see lots of random things in nature. But that literally doesn't tie into anything else you've said so far. So what is like... How do you say we see this, 
therefore God, like that's our designer. How, how do you get from this therefore designer? As I've already answered, though the, though the mainstream narrative says that everything's random, we don't see anything random in numbers nor in the physical world. We see everything in creation constructed with the ratio of phi, which is 1.618. Uh, everything except for dinosaurs, that is, uh, throughout nature has that ratio of construction. So, so again, you, and, you, you and keep going on and on box. about things that make literally no logical sense. Yes, we do literally see random things happen in nature all the time. So that's just factually wrong. Like the decay of an atom is random. Um, quantum mechanics, there's randomness. There's all kinds of randomness in quantum field theory. But that literally has no connection to literally anything you've said. So what I need you to do is to tell me how you think the patterns that you're seeing indicate design. You simply saying that we don't see randomness in nature does not in any way tell me how you think that indicates there's a designer. Like, okay, let's say you were right, that there's no randomness in nature. How does that lead to a designer? Like, there's nothing in what you've said that actually leads to what you're trying to argue for. Like, it doesn't make any sense what you're saying whatsoever. Well, a lot of people would disagree. Because it's quite obvious that if there's, if your claim is that everything came about randomly, then I never claimed have... that. I never made that claim in my opening. So what is your claim? How do you get your claim from arguments to evidence? That we can see design in numbers and we see it throughout nature. Just like How? There, are, there are laws of physics, just like there are laws of thermodynamics. Who made these laws? Nobody. Who put everything into place? Nobody. They are products of reality. They are a thing of nature. Nobody designed them. Problem solved. That's your opinion. That's your belief. Well, but that's, my th question, that's what the evidence it, indicates. Why do you think there's an alternative? That's the question. Like, what evidence do you have that they were designed? That's the question. How? How do okay. you get from, there are uh, laws of nature too, they must be designed. That's the part we're missing. Well, because I'm looking at evidence and you're you're saying that it's not evidence. What, what but is that's the evidence? because that's your opinion. What's the evidence? Uh, and you see that different people What's have different evidence? conclusions. The evidence is that we see patterns in the pi sequence. Okay. We see okay. patterns in the phi sequence. So wait, wait, that, we this see was my original patterns question. Throughout nature. This, wait, wait, wait. This was my original question. How do you go from you see pretty patterns to design? How do you get from pretty patterns? to design. That's the first thing I asked you, the very first thing. So I agree, there are patterns in numbers. What does that mean? Because mm -hmm. like there are patterns in numbers if they were designed or if they were not designed, there are still patterns. There's always going to be patterns. Why do you think patterns require a designer? Because when patterns show beauty, like flowers and characters, like we clearly saw in the multiplication and the division uh, results, if we see beauty and we see infinite processing power, which what, means what, that what numbers is... numbers are infinite. So calculate the pi sequence is infinite. That means that even quantum computers can't get to the end of it, which means that it's not random and that it's eternal. Which none, of means that, none of what you're saying makes sense again. So yes, pi goes on infinitely. Mind. Wait, 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 wait. So pi goes on infinitely. Yes, I agree. That means a computer can't process to the end of pi, yes, which has what to do with design? How, how does that lead to design? There are numbers with an infinite set of things. Those can't be processed. They can't be processed whether or not they're designed. If there was a designer, his mind could not process it because that's literally what infinite means. So it makes no difference whether or not there's a design yeah. to infinite sets. Zero difference, whether or not design, no difference. I want to give you a chance to respond, Howard, but first Thanks. is I don't mind it, Tom. I'm not a picky guy, but I know that people will pick me apart later. Is your audio, there's just a little bit of crackling. And if someone said it might be that you might be clipping. Oh, uh, if might you be, have it. I, I have a game playing in the background. It's probably that. Maybe. We'll, we'll give it a shot. But go ahead, Howard. Thank you. It's because uh, Tom's throwing a lot of things at me, so I'm trying not to forget things. See, the whole point of me bringing up the uh, bacterium, bacteria, uh, how do flagellum? you pronounce it, Tom? Flagellum, flagellum. Is that just like a mouse trap wouldn't work if you only built it one tiny step at a time, neither would life. 
So it kind of debunks the evolution theory. So to answer your question, if there's no physical evidence for evolution, it's just a theory, but there is evidence that there's beauty and infinite processing power in the design of nature, telling us that there's a, there's a designer out of space, out of time to be able to process with such power. And it also, like I said, debunks evolution when you think you can't build something one step at a time. Everything works in harmony because it's been designed as such, just like we don't see any evolution in numbers. Seven was never three. The numbers are, are how they've always okay, been. Okay, okay. You, and so again, is the phi, and so things, is the too many things. Let's go back. So first, Sorry, the, you the, get a lot of things out too. No, the bacteria flagellum has been proven that it's been evolved. We have the evolutionary process fully described. It is totally evolutionary explained. There is an entire court case on this fully explained. We know for a fact evolution is a fact. Intelligent design is a pseudoscience, but that has nothing to do with anything you said in your opening. So I don't know why you're bringing that up. Um, but the, none of that answers the question of why you think pretty patterns indicate design. You said something about because it has beauty or something like patterns with beauty equals design that's silly beauty is subjective there's no like beauty property in a pattern it's something we've seen like oh i really like that pattern so we see lots of things that are beautiful that have no design whatsoever like if you just drop a piece of paint or paint jar on the ground and it makes a pretty pattern like oh that's really pretty it doesn't mean it's designed because it's pretty pretty does not equal design I want to give you a chance to respond, Howard. Tom, I think there's maybe, is your mic maybe rubbing against something? Or no. is there something that's rubbing against anything else? No. Because there's still feedback. You're turning off your Nintendo game. It didn't fix it. No. You don't know what the sound's coming from? Nope. Um, it's not a big deal, but I'll give you a chance to respond, uh, Howard. It's just that I know, like I said, on... there are some connoisseurs out there that right. love to pick on modern day debate, despite the fact I have no training in audio. But... Go ahead, Howard. Uh, what was Tom's last remark? Uh, it's just throwing me. I think he said you won him over. Sounds fine on my stream. They say it's my fine on my side. Huh. What was your last point, Tom? Um, you pretty doesn't equal design. So you said if there's patterns and they have prettiness ah, yeah, 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 in them, yeah. they're okay, designed. Okay. That makes no sense. Okay. I got it. Thank you for reminding me. So I beg to differ because the world's uh, top plastic surgeons will tell you that beauty is all about perfect proportionality. So if you get things in the right size at the right place, then you find beauty. So if we see beauty in patterns that look like flowers and other um, characters that we see in creation, that doesn't say random, that says design, which if you take a paintbrush and just paint without looking, that's not going to be as pretty as if you take a paintbrush in front of you and try to paint something with your design, with your imagination, with your talent, as you know. So my question to you, Tom, because no. you seem to be getting a lot of you seem to be getting a lot of questions in Tom. So if I can just ask you one, what would you accept for evidence for intelligent design? Novel test what, and predictions. And what would Okay, we'll go there. And what would information from a higher dimension look like? <laughs> don't even know what that gibberish means. Supposing that intelligent design is true and that I'm right and that I'm trying to present it to you, what kind? What would information from a higher dimension look like? I, I don't know what information from a higher dimension means. That's gibberish. But if you have a theory and you think you're right, then you would need to tell me what you would expect to see. And then we could do a test to see if we see it. I don't know what your gibberish hypothesis means. How am I supposed to know what we're supposed to see if your model is right? You're supposed to tell us that. Like if I have a hypothesis, objective morality, for example, I can tell you what we would expect to see. Like we would expect to see the moral patterns in other species if we discover them in our AIs. So I can take my theory, uh, infer in the future what we should see and if my theory is correct, and then we can test that to see if it's correct. But I don't know what your theory, I don't understand your theory. You're supposed to tell us that. You, it's your job to say, if my theory is correct, here's what we should see. It's not my job to tell you that. But I'm still well, waiting for I'm... like, how, how does pretty numbers, saying that plastic surgeons think beauty is proportional, they're talking about human beauty and how humans interpret beauty, which is evolution. Evolution determines how we see beauty. It has, it's not, there's no like objective beauty out there. Believe beauty is an evolved process. How, how does any of this in any way indicate that us seeing beauty in certain kinds of patterns equals mind did it? It doesn't make sense. 
Well, to some people it does, because um, like I say, random is distortion. <sighs> Clarity comes from design, from calculation. And calculation, con the concepts of calculation come from a mind. So that means that mind was before man. So no, what no, you... no, it doesn't. None of that makes sense. Like what you call a quantum field that gives a magic answer for everything. If you give it billions of years, other people call the creator because it must be conscious. Well, no, there's no evidence it's conscious. That's the problem. We have lots of evidence. There's no of evidence fields. of a quant. There is no evidence of a quantum field. There's, there's evidence tons, of there's energy. There's tons of evidence. So we have tons of evidence of quantum fields. Quantum field theory is one of the most successful predictive theories in all of science, which mm. has thousands of predictive answers that have been proven correct before like we made predictions before we knew them and got them right that is evidence so yeah we have lots of evidence for quantum fields as far as i can tell you have no evidence of anything mind related your evidence seems to be it's pretty and prettiness requires a mind therefore if we see something that's pretty a mind did it like, i see a rock i think it's pretty does that mean a mind did it no problem solved but when we see that the scientists uh, say that they only understand 5%, is it? That 95% is dark energy and dark matter. So yeah. you're making interpretations on limited perspective, which is what I showed in my video. What? We have limited perspective and very limited understanding of things that uh, machinery and technology can read. We don't know how to interpret everything. So we theorize. So the theory of evolution and the theory of quantum mechanics and stuff isn't dem demonstrable it's only predictive and sometimes they're right but we can also make predictions and observe conceptual numbers um so and, and we can make we predictions can't observe in numbers. conceptual numbers but sorry I, I said we can make predictions with numbers and we can also make predictions on their effects on matter in the physical world which we can measure that which other good. people can repeat wait, with wait, the scientific wait, method we can apply more. natural tell sciences tell us more about these effects Thanks numbers for me. wait 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 because i'm interested in this right. you said something very right, very interesting you, Tom, don't worry you said that you can see the effects numbers have on the real world i know of no effects abstract objects by definition have no effects so please that would be great evidence tell me about these effects numbers have on the real world well, like I said, when we can see fractals on a computer screen that have been processed with math, and then we see fractals all throughout nature, like the Romanesco broccoli, uh, fern trees, lightning, snowflakes, uh, then yes, we can measure it, we can observe it, it's repeatable. And uh, your beliefs are only based on theories, calculations. They're not falsifiable. They're wait, all wait, wait, theoretical. Wait, go, go back, go back, go back. So, Whereas so, wait, stop, stop, stop. So you said that no, I can't finish my point. I can never finish my point. That's because your points go on forever and you just don't ever answer the question. So the question was, is how can we yeah, see yeah. the effects of numbers in reality? And you said something like, um, we can see fractals in nature. Is that because there are fractals in numbers that they happen in nature? No, nobody thinks that. It's because numbers describe reality. We see fractals in reality. Therefore, we can use numbers to describe reality. It isn't the numbers that cause anything. Numbers are not prescriptive. They don't exist and guide the universe to make it into different shapes. That is false. So simply seeing things that can be described with numbers is not evidence that numbers do anything in reality. So no, your example is not in any way evidence of anything. And yes, we have tons of evidence. Uh, when you call something a theory or hypothesis, it's irrelevant. We have novel testable predictions. If we can predict the future and get it right before we know it, it doesn't matter if you call it a theory or hypothesis, it beats yours that can't do that. In your opinion, that's where we disagree strongly, you see, because like I was trying to finish my point again, uh, astrology is where you can make predictions about the future using time, numbers, arches and angles archangels and you can laugh all you want tom but throughout history all of the billionaires and all of the royalty have used astrology to make their biggest decisions and when we look at uh, a lot of the secret societies they study uh, the seven pillars of wisdom which uh, if you don't know their geometry um arithmetic math astronomy music grammar rhetoric and logic 
And this is, well, I do, because not only have I got personal experience from being a Freemason, which tells me that there is definitely some uh, importance to this if they study this when they're all grown men. It's also mentioned in the Bible in Proverbs 9, what, uh, 9 verse 1. I, I don't so care there's about historical you said, evidence. You said astrology, astrology can make predictions. Astrology can make yeah. predictions. Okay, yeah. do it. Because all of the tests that every scientist has ever done has proved astrology is complete bunk. So if you can actually make successful predictions with astrology, that would be great. Have rich people used astrology in the past? Yes. Did it work? No. Um, the fact that rich people like to use it isn't evidence it works. What you need is to use a controlled experiment, do a testable prediction and get it right at a higher rate than chance. Can you do that? If you can, please do it. There's lots of things people can do. As I, as you know from myself, Tom, I've been doing experiments that will never get peer reviewed because the problem with peer reviewed, even when it's a blind, please let me finish speak, making a point though for once, Tom. Just well, once. you have to address the thing I asked. Please like I let asked, me make my point. Please said, just let me make my point because it's not enjoyable for anyone to watch. If I we do want to start over again. Howard, about a minute, and then we'll come back to you, Tom. If there's anything that has to be corrected. Thanks. Uh, you're going to have to remind me uh, what Tom said or what I was saying. Because... Holy shit. Sorry, mate, but y you've... I asked you. You said astrology could make successful predictions. Give mm. me one. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> like I say, throughout history, rich people like royalty <coughs> have paid for the best astrologers in the world. And it's a science... <clears throat> It's a language. It's how to interpret something uh, where people like dentists can be good and bad. But it's a science that has lasted throughout history. And it's also a science that we've seen throughout the whole world throughout history. And like I was trying to say, the problem with peer reviewed papers is that they're under peer pressure. So it's the scientific community is under peer pressure to maintain certain narratives so that they don't lose their PhDs and stuff, as you know. No, they're not. Thank you. So so In stop telling opinion. me rich people do it. I don't care if rich people do it. Gwyneth Paltrow pays lots of people money to put rocks up their badge. I don't care what rich people do. Give me an example. If you think it works, do it. Get the lottery numbers or something. Do it. Many people do. Tom, and they pay a lot of money for it. And there's a lot no, I'm of. I'm asking cow... you, you do it right now. Show us the work, how this can work. Please show us its efficacy. Don't tell me other people do it. I don't care if other people do it. Show me it works. So you don't care that other people have been doing it and will continue to do uh, it throughout time. No, I don't all care. All over the world. Show me it works. Show me it I... go. Yes, go. I don't speak that language. I just recognize that other people do and that other people pay a lot of money. And a lot of people have found many things in horoscopes and a lot of people have tested things. But like I say, you won't ever see it on the mainstream narratives because it goes against your worldview. No, that's the bias argument. The bias argument is always fallacious. It's because it doesn't work. That's why you never see it on the news. If it worked, the military would be using it. It doesn't work. They tried it. The military tried all this stuff. It doesn't work been proven to fail every single time we can testably predict it fails every single time and if you would like to do a novel testable prediction to show it works feel free at any time to win the lottery consistently multiple times in a row and i will believe you go ahead yeah well the thing is we disagree um on things and it doesn't look like we're gonna agree but i just appreciate having this conversation because it gave me a chance to demonstrate to everyone out there that does have an open mind and isn't blinded with uh, theories that um, there's definitely more to the makeup of our creation you see my one of my big arguments for you tom is what are the alternatives i can only think of three mainstream yeah, narratives excuse me just a second i've got i've got something stuck in my throat i believe naturalism materialism are the main alternatives okay so if I'm right, there's only three mainstream narratives for the creation of life. The first is intelligent design, a creator. The second would be evolution. And the third would be aliens, which is still intelligent design. But 
Are there any other logical alternative possibilities that you can think of? Because I only know of those three. Well, and then I'll, I'll go on with my point after. You mentioned mainstream, like no, intelligent design isn't mainstream. Intelligent design is pseudoscience. The mainstream hypotheses are abiogenesis. Um, it's the origin of life, uh, not evolution. And that's the only mainstream accepted hypothesis that has any evidence whatsoever. Like there is, I just had a conversation with this, uh, with, um, ooh, I forgot his name, but we, there was a poll from the Ohio, Ohio scientist, something, something from the NCSE, and it showed that 90 something percent of scientists polled agreed there is zero evidence for intelligent design whatsoever. So there is no mainstream intelligent design. It's not mainstream, it's pseudoscience. It doesn't even count as a hypothesis because you don't make testable predictions that are confirmable. So it's not an option until you have something that can make successful predictions, then you don't have a viable model at all. So the only viable models are like panspermia, which I also don't think makes predictions, I'm not sure, or uh, abiogenesis. Abiogenesis is the only one making real progress. That's the only real model that there is. It's the only game in town, as Dawkins put it. Okay, so you're saying that the only real uh, explanation is evolution. Uh, abiogenesis. Evolution is what happens after life exists. Great. So let's just suppose that the field of research known as biogeology debunks a long timeline. And let's even go as far as saying what Einstein and Stephen Hawking were terrified of, that Earth actually has a special location in this universe. And that not only would aliens turn out to be interdimensional demons, as the Bible and Quran suggest, but my point being that if the biogeology research turns out to be true, and if the globe lie uh, experiments it can't get debunked, then doesn't your single alternative uh, theory for life, doesn't it? collapse no is there any hope for evolution or whatever you call it no if the, if if biogeology debunks the long timeline for, no from noah's flood no uh so even if you disproved evolution that would not in any way be evidence of intelligent design what you would need is positive novel successful predictions that an intelligent design hypothesis makes before we know it and you have to get them right otherwise you have zero evidence even if you disproved evolution 100 percent or a biogenesis 100%, you would still have zero evidence for your model. For you to have evidence, what you need to do is say, here's my hypothesis. If it's true, here's what we would expect to see uh, in this experiment, X, Y, or Z, or whatever. Do the experiment, and if the result confirms your prediction, then you would have evidence for your hypothesis. Simply saying you prove evolution wrong is not in any way evidence of yours. It's called an argument from ignorance fallacy. Well, see, I disagree about the not having evidence because any evidence that anyone ever presents to people like yourself is called supernatural metaphysical pseudoscience because it's um, from a higher dimension, <laughs> uh, the infam the source. So it's a never-ending debate. But um, my, my, main, my main point just, is... Just to clarify, one... evidence is anything that can differentiate imagination from reality. So if you present that, you have evidence. Yeah. It's The reason it's pseudoscience is because you can't. Like, there's nothing that you've presented that can differentiate imagination from reality. I disagree. But like I say, there's a lot of peer pressure on the peer review system. But if I can just finish making my point, Tom. Um, so you've agreed that if... You, you've said that if biogeology which uh, supports the story of a worldwide flood like the 500 myths uh, noah's ark which you can go and check for yourself along any coastline uh, or in a riverbed or uh, in a valley or even buried in mud there's evidence of a worldwide flood everywhere petrified organs and four different types of location that's four environments that shows that there's evidence that the timeline's not as long as we've been told so my point being if biogeology debunks the timeline and it debunks evolution you've already agreed with me that there is no other logical alternative theory than intelligent design 
No, 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 that's not We weren't logical. talking about evidence. We were talking about logic. No, I no, said, no, no, is no. there any other oh. logical explanation for the creation of life apart from intelligent design or evolution? And you agreed that there is none. No, no, so no, 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 I did not. To, no, so I my did point not. Is, so, so I said that there is no rational alternative to abiogenesis. Intelligent design isn't a rational alternative. It's a nothing burger. It's a, it's, you have no evidence. It's magic farting pixie leprechauns equivalent to that. No, it's not a rational hypothesis at all. And so it doesn't even qualify as a theory. It's not even there. It's just making shit up is what is technically the technical term for it. So if you want to say that um, if evolution was proven false, that means the only lash, rational answer is we don't know. You don't even get to make up an alternative anymore because there's no evidence for intelligent design. So like if say, if, say if we prove evolution wrong, it would still be equally as rational to say evolution did it than is to say God did it because they have equally no evidence at this point. Well, surely you've heard the age old um, argument that everything that we see that's been created has been created by a creator. Everything that we see like table or watch has sure. been designed, programmed, uh coded it's uh it's kind of crazy that you're asking me to accept that your theory that's never ever ever been observed in reality you're asking me to believe something random like an explosion or evolution from one in a billion and everything just changes over time yet we see no change in math we see no changes throughout creation no, no, wait, throughout no, one, history, no one says everything apart changes from, apart from Apart no from one dinosaurs, says everything changes. we don't see all the fossils apart from dinosaurs show the phi, phi ratio of construction. It doesn't 1. even make sense. Rate. Phi is irrelevant. So we don't see any evolu evidence for evolution. We see lots of evidence for creator in the fact that everything that we see has been designed by somebody. <laughs> and also, Tom, and also, Tom, you can call it what you want, mate. Uh, also, you can go all into your definitions if you want some, but my yeah. point is you're asking me to believe in something that we've never seen. And you're telling me that it's illogical of me to ask you to believe in something that we see all the time. You see a table, you know that someone's made it. You've never seen a table that hasn't been made by somebody, yet you're asking me to believe that. And that's where I don't understand your logic. And I if I may say, say you see, the point is, Everything that we've ever created or designed has been inspired. Have you ever had an original idea? Because it seems like everything is just a wait, remix. Wait, none of that matters. So, so again, yes, human designed things are designed by humans. You know what's not designed by humans? Life. Life is not designed by humans. Planets are not designed by humans. Numbers are not designed by humans. Numbers describe reality. Reality is not described by humans. So none of the things you're talking about are analogous to human designed tables. We have never seen humans design life ever. What we also haven't seen is supernatural, other dimensional beings, gods, um, anything that even closely <laughs> corresponds to any of the things you're talking about. What we do see is novel testable predictions that confirm evolution. So what matters isn't what we see. What matters is, is which hypothesis can make successful predictions of things we don't know yet before we know them and get it right. There's only one that can evolution and abiogenesis. Your hypothesis cannot. You have no evidence. What we see doesn't matter anymore. Whether or not we see evolution directly, which we have, doesn't matter anymore because one of the hypotheses makes successful predictions about things we don't know yet and gets them right, which means that's the only one that's rational to believe whether or not we actually see the things it says. So if there's a model of evolution that predicts we're going to find a transitional form between fish and lizards exactly at this specific strata in this specific location and gets it right, that one has evidence and that's the only one that's reasonable to, to believe because the alternatives couldn't predict that. So yes, evolution has evidence. Doesn't matter if we directly see it. We have, but it wouldn't matter if we did because it's the one that predicts the future. Yours cannot. Okay, there's a few points there. Let me get them all out. Rock strata dating has been debunked by petrified upright I trees say, going through them. Dating. I don't care. Dating. I don't care. You were talking about rock strata, uh, rock uh, strata of rock uh, being uh, le the layers of rock strata being dependable. They're not. No, no, so I didn't. Please don't, in no, please no, don't I didn't. interrupt. Please don't interrupt uh, me I when you're talking about fossils that were found in timelines. Seconds, please, I promise we'll give you a chance to correct whatever Howard says, Tom. Thank you. It's yeah, you, thank you, time. James. Like saying, please, completely mute, irrelevant please, mute, please mute yourself like, for a minute. 
Tom, I, please. To be fair, it's please. To, we'll give you plenty of time to refute it if you need more than it's a minute. It's just a That's waste fine. of time because he's not addressing the topic. Like I said, we made predictions about this the strata. Is... I don't care about what what dating there is. That where's a prediction? Can we predict which give strata him a shot. it's in? He wants a chance matters. to talk. It doesn't matter. There's no timeline. Okay, I've got to give him a chance to talk. Go ahead, Howard. Thank, thank you, James. It's it's just that I'm scared. I'll forget what I wanted to say. Go you ahead. see, this, it seems. It seems like you're scared of what I've got to say, Tom, because you have to keep interrupting me and trying to throw me off what I'm thinking. So, uh, one, we do see evidence that uh, layers of rock strata can't be depended on for making any kind of calculations in time or predictions. Um, also, uh, you can interpret and predict as much as you want from your prediction uh, results from your predictions, but you're not actually creating anything. There's nothing new under the sun. Uh, I'll get. I'll tell you what, though. You're right. Uh, you're wrong. Man did create planets. Man created planets, but they were inspired by the wandering stars. So we can talk about that another time. But um, my main point is everything has been inspired by nature. And all we do is remix things that we're given. We haven't created anything new, just like in science, we've never proven evolution. We can only prove mutation. So all of your evidence is either theoretical or it's biased or it's limited understanding. You have never demonstrated anything new under the sun and you're asking people to ignore what we see every day, that things get designed and created by a creator all throughout history that's what we see you're asking me to believe in the unseen and you're telling me that i'm spiritual and that i'm religious i think you're fanatical and you're blinded by pride but please okay well not all of your irrelevant gibberish has absolutely nothing to do with anything i said is done what i said was a hypothesis that can make successful predictions of things we don't know yet gives us reason to believe it evolution does that mm -hmm. like one of the predictions which is predicting that there would be a transitional form at this exact location notice i didn't mention dating i don't care it's a prediction that we will find this fossil at this location and it was correct that means it has evidence you have none of those you have no examples of being able to predict things before we know it yet it means your hypothesis is garbage that's why intelligent design is a pseudoscience until you can make successful predictions you are not on the same level as science Like I say, um, people do make predictions in math, in, in observations, using math, and also measurements, which is numbers. And we also can, um, like I say, use things like astronomy to make uh, predictions, and we get results. We can also do many other uh, kind of experiments that prove that there is energy, um, and energy is kind of conscious. Uh, there's rice ex like you can what? keep laughing over me when I'm talking. Just, just, can I can say there me. are magic pixies well, in my butthole, but until you actually show them, it's not evidence. Well, what are these predictions? That you a have? Chance. Let's He's give had a, a chance. chance for 60 seconds. Throughout history, there's many, many, many people that have made accounts of higher dimensional experiences, whether it's been through drugs or through religious or spiritual practices. There's secret societies like Satanists that do um, all sorts of blood magic and dirty uh, rituals. There's secret societies like that one that I was in that study uh, the magic behind music, math, geometry, and astronomy, never mind how to persuade people with grammar, rhetoric, and logic of how to think for things. Um, to answer uh, your question, um, I, I think that, yeah, that there's evidence everywhere, but that you're just not accepting it because you, you're you literally saying that anything metaphysical can't be counted as scientific. No, I'm yet not. Yet you're asking that. us to ignore everything scientific that we know, like that when people make rules or make order or design something, it's because they've got intellect and they've got um, an idea. And that you're asking me to believe that everything that we see has come from no idea, from no space, from no time, and it's all random. And that is absurd. But More that's okay. That's your opinion. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything I said. Like, oh my God, we just we need to like stop giving people time to spew nonsense that has literally nothing to do with the question asked. Uh, it's just a waste of everyone's time. I asked, 
What are the novel predictions? Saying lots of people do it, it's like saying, I can say there are lots of people who have seen magical pixies up my butt. Present them? No, I'm not going to present the magical pixies, even though there's whole bunches of them that happened. Never going to happen. Stop telling me people did it. I don't give a shit. Show me. Do it. Stop okay. telling this other people I'm do, sorry. It. do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you don't like the way I'm answering your questions. It's just that you're asking a lot of questions, Tom. I'd I'm like asking to one, ask one question. Give me the And evidence. I've given you the best answer as many times as I can. So let's move on. That's the best what, answer I can what, give you. Other people I've have given... done it isn't an answer. If you think it works, throughout... show it. Stop telling us other people have done there's... it. I don't care. Yeah. There's accounts throughout history all over the world, and it's all very similar. And there's a lot of um, pattern recognition when people talk about ghosts, when people talk about uh, experiences in astral uh, projection, when people talk about lucid dreaming, when people talk about uh, spiritual encounters. All over the world, we see constructions with the same demigods uh, depicted in the constructions that are magically constructed better than we can even build today. So yeah, there's evidence everywhere, Tom, but you're just not accepting it. So can I ask a question now? I've answered your question as many ways as I can. Um, why aren't we being taught uh, this kind of math in school, like sacred geometry, some of the stuff I showed in my video? What's the big secret? Why is it that secret societies study it, but we don't study it in school? Surely children, that's why. Surely, surely children would love to see the patterns that numbers make. Might it be that it's too influential and it gives no. hints? Oh, okay. It's because it's dumb and does nothing. It has no practical application in the world. The reason we teach kids math is because it has practical application so they can do stuff. We don't teach them garbage math that does nothing, like numerology, because it's garbage. That's the reason. If it worked, we teach it. If it doesn't work, don't teach it. It's very simple. Well, you should you should watch the video that I made again uh, in your own convenience, Tom, because you'll see there is lots of uh, useful practice. Um, there's and lots why can't of you demonstrate them? I did. I showed how you can calculate numbers in different ways when you uh, use the different techniques and um, you show can also me a use... pragmatic application in the world a novel prediction you can do every time i've asked for that you can give nothing you just gibberish on about nothingness that you have and then keep blaming me for not accepting your gibberish like you, i ask you for evidence with one question and you can't answer that simple question with anything but some other people have done it even though i don't have any myself i've spent the whole night answering your questions as best as i can and uh, I don't mind. I don't kids. mind because I'm. I don't mind because people that are interested are getting to hear a lot more from me than they are you. But my my point is, Tom. There are scientists. Uh, I can't remember his name. R Rolling or something. The coil, uh, where he's used uh, vortex math. Uh, and found that it actually maps out, like I said, a torus field, and he's used it for different um, ex different creations. Different. Um, he's, he's made things. Uh, like magnets and uh, different uh, magnetic fields using uh, this math uh, system that you're saying is useless. So yeah, there what? are you predictions and useful applications with vortex math. So there is a point in learning the beauty uh, behind the numbers, the patterns that we can find in numbers, even though you don't think so. I still think it would be a uh, very influential and also uh, it would make children want to learn a little bit more because it makes it a lot more interesting than just algebra so it seems like there is a little bit of a conspiracy because apart from the stuff i showed there's lots of beautiful sacred geometry that can be useful for calculating useful for creating electromagnetic uh, applications and um, many other things like i've said whether you believe in them or not that's uh, totally up to you yeah, i didn't mention vortex math at all i don't even know what that is i mentioned astrology we know it's false if you think it's true show it when you say we know it's false, you're talking for yourself. Like I said, there's a lot of people no, all around the world humans. that disagree I'm not, with you. I'm not you. talking about myself. I'm talking about all rational humans with rational evidence know it's false. Well, there you go. That's your opinion, Tom. Well, it's but a fact. What, it's evidence, a fact. what evidence have you actually presented to counter my evidence? And what uh, answer did you give me when I said, what evidence would you accept for intelligent design if it's from a higher dimension? <laughs> I said Surely novel Tesla seeing... predictions. That was my answer. Yeah, but how can you do... No... Um, like I said, when people are doing uh, predictions, but their understanding is limited because just like I said, we're not being taught the right math you don't you don't school. need any understanding 
a novel prediction is you predict something we don't know yet and it happens. I don't need okay. any understanding. I just need to see the prediction. I need to see the experiment. I need to see the result. I don't need to understanding is irrelevant here. Okay, I've got a really good answer for your question about um, why astrology is very difficult for people to prove. And you will agree with me on this because it's a historical fact that um, they changed the calendar. Am I right? Sure. Just agree, agree with me on one thing, at least tonight. Yes, Tom. yes you people agree that they changed, changed the calendar. The calendars all the time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if I may, if I may continue, it seems like we've lost a month because the six month has been removed because September sept is seven. October means eighth month. November means ninth month, and December dieth means tenth month. Okay, so then if we add January and February, we find out that January is actually worshipping a god called Janus. And uh, March, uh, I believe the 21st should be the end of the year. And April's Fools, April the 1st, would be the start, the first month of the year. Depending if you're going on a sun or a moon calendar. Because as I showed in the, the video, if people go back to the pie sequence, um, there's 28 days. What does any of this have to do with astrology working? I'm going to make my, well, my points quite obvious. If they've changed the calendar, how can anybody know what the real day is? And could it be that they're doing it so people can't keep the Sabbath? like the Bible uh, asked uh, people to do. So no one can worship the creator as the creator wants. And nobody can calculate. No, I don't know. Like, please let me finish. Nobody can calculate correctly on astronomy when they don't know the correct date and one month of the year has been missing because when they say the earth is on a no this is all back, irrelevant that's the answer it's not it's not relevant i was trying to finish my point i'm sorry no, no. it's going on long it's because you uh, keep interrupting me i forget uh, where i was i got, I got your point. point i got your point your no, point no, was, no. My wait, main wait, point wait, is your point is that they say the earth has changed right the calendar has changed yeah. and if people use astrology based on the calendar if they've changed the calendar then they can't accurately use astrology that's your point right that is the whole five past that's minutes of you speaking point. that was the point you made which i said in like five seconds so your point is wrong because i don't care if people change the calendar if you want to demonstrate astrology works <laughs> you need to give an example of it working not examples of it not working i agree it doesn't work could it be that it doesn't work because people change the calendar and maybe there's some other working kind somewhere else in the universe sure until you demonstrate it then all we have is it doesn't work and my point is correct So um, they say that our reality, our world, our universe is on the back. A quick heads up that we'll be going to the Q&A in just a few minutes. That's cool. I'm pretty much finished. But my, my point is that throughout history, different cultures have said that our world, our reality, our universe is on the back of a turtle shell. And the point is that a turtle shell uh, consists of um, 28 sections around the border and 13 sections in the middle. Now that's not a coincidence. We see these numbers everywhere. Like I said to people that paid attention in my video, 13 times 28 is 364 days in a year and one day to rest or to resurrect. So the reason they say that the world is on the turtle's back is because there originally there was 13 moons in a year. They've taken a month out so that we don't know where we are. We're disorientated. We can't worship correctly. We can't calculate using the stars correctly. This is evidence, historical evidence that there's people against us. And to final, my final point is, that days, months, and what you call planets are all named after fallen angels so that we're worshipping the of, creation rather than the creator. Thank in you. In terms of intelligent design, I'll give you like 10 to 20 seconds to maybe use a couple sentences to tie that back to intelligent <laughs> design because I, I bet the audience is confused because I don't understand myself, to be honest. Okay, I'm saying that there's lots of evidence that they've changed the calendar and named the days, months, and what we call planets after fallen angels. Uh, yeah, false I got that. Gods. You said that so there's a big consensus to lie to us to just 
to confuse us by changing the calendar, to have us worshipping the sun in the center of the universe, and to have us worshipping the other demigods by using their names every day, every month. I just when don't we talk about seeing, the... I hate to interrupt, mm -hmm. but I'm just not seeing how it ties to if you want to give the muscle afterward, but if you can give me the skeleton first. Mm -hmm. And then we've got to go to the Q&A because I, I still don't see. Are you saying that this is a reason? This is a reason why humans have difficulty seeing intelligent design is because we've there's like a faction of people out there that are. I, exactly. Except I'm you're bringing saying, up the moons and the yep. pagan god stuff. And that was where I was like, wait, hold on. I'm like, I'm. it's just such a that part. I didn't see how that fit in. You, you said it beautifully, James. Thank you. They've purposely confused us so that we don't see intelligent design and we don't feel our connection to the creator and the truth, the source of truth. Because the, if we showed the, the patterns... Like the government factions or the false gods, like the pagan god stuff? It seems like people in powerful yeah, places right. well, are getting, getting inspired from a higher dimensional beings. Let's... Uh, but, I, I hate to interrupt, but I just well, let's just jump into the Q and A. I I just I, know, I, I want I want to I want to mention that stuff. Oh, so um, the mm -hmm. reason there's no evidence of intelligent design is because it was hidden from us, which would then indicate there's no evidence of intelligent design, and I would win. But I do I love the turtles. Lots of lots of turtles and, and the turtles thing is just it got me. Great evidence of turtles, phenomenal. This the one seven. coming in from okay. do want to say a couple of things. One housekeeping stuff for the channel. Our guests are linked in the description. That includes at the podcast. You can find both Tom's and Howard's links in the description box there. And as all of the modern day debates that end up on YouTube also end up on our podcast, which is available on Spotify, Apple, you name it, every single podcast app. Check it out if you haven't. And if you're listening via podcast, check out our guest links. And this one coming in from Theros Rex says, Howard, would you like to debate a geologist on mud fossils or your heart shaped stones? Also, Tom, have fun with this. Yes, I'd love to, because uh, like I say, we see patterns throughout nature. Uh, when we look at the hearts of all creatures, um, when we also look at the harp shaped stones that we find in four completely different environments, they always have a flat top like a heart with a dent or even a hole where the aorta uh, goes in. Uh, they always have a flat or a concave back, and they always have a convex, a multifaceted front that leans down to one side and twists at the bottom. These are just a few of the many uh, characteristics that everybody that bothers to look along a riverbed, along the coast, in a valley so of burying in mud, will find evidence for intelligent design throughout nature. You. I think they're asking if you'd be willing to come on Modern Day Debate or some other platform to debate them. I'd love to. Okay, this one coming in from, do appreciate it. Nathan Collins, appreciate it, says, question for Howard and T-Jump. Was math created by humans like a language or was math discovered by humans? Math was invented. It's a language to describe reality. The patterns in reality exist, but that isn't math. Math is just the description. Howard, okay. thoughts? Well, uh, as I said in the life of pi, 22 divided by 7 gives us pi. The human skull consists of 22 pieces and seven holes. There's seven days in a week, seven colors in a rainbow, seven music notes. We have seven layers of skin and the seven heavens, but it must all be coincidence. You got it. Two it's... pi divided by two is pi. <laughs> Bone. This one coming in from, do you appreciate your question? Chris Zimbaldi says, Tom, if intelligent design is false, what is it that is fundamental and absolute and defines everything that can be and cannot be? Quantum Don't fields. say reality. Quantum fields. Reality. I'm going with reality. <laughs> this one from Big Bad Ma says, Howard, can you name one prominent proponent of intelligent design who isn't an Abrahamic religious creationist? Sure. If you show the patterns that I uh, pro, um, that I brought out from the division results and from the multiplication results and show them to a child, they'll see the beauty and they'll sense the divine influence. It's only hypnotized adult egos 
that will reject and discount and try and to debate and try and debate what is so blatantly obvious this design <laughs> intelligent design wasn't the question for academics and he's like kids kids are the ones this one from thunderstorm says i wonder if t-jump realizes he disagrees with nikola tesla i disagree mm -hmm. with lots of people who are older that don't have as much information about reality as we do now so yes disagree with newton and einstein on certain things and ptolemy on a whole bunch of things yes it's not like people who say that think that's disagreeing with people who were smart in the past makes you less likely to be right and they just don't understand how reality works this one coming in from do appreciate your question also housekeeping type stuff if you hadn't seen it pinned at the top of the chat surgeon general thanks so much reminding you that we do have a discord it's new modern day debates discord is pinned at the top of the chat it's also in the description box check it out if you haven't already and this one coming in from do appreciate it notion slave says is this the wrong guest debate i thought this was intelligent design it might help to step outside for fresh air perhaps there's too much monoxide in your house well I, I feel the same when I listen to people talk about quantum fields um, creating consciousness and uh, morals and um, beauty from just random nothingness. And then um, I, I also hear stuff like entanglement. Uh, these theories uh, of entanglement sound congested, congested, sluggish and suffocating. But we see phi fractals never overlap due to the perfect ratio of construction so you know believe what you want but if you listen to the words entanglement it goes against what we observe this one coming in from nathan collins says well we actually got this one this one is from big bad mama says i got that one thunderstorm says i wonder got that one too dark indeed says howard please define syllogism then make one with your argument <laughs> thanks love you guys <laughs> Got caught me out there. Like I said, I'm not as good as de at definitions as Tom. Uh, syllogism from... is an argument that has premises and a conclusion. So, if men are mortal, then Socrates is a man. Socrates is mortal. That's that's a syllogism. This one from Robert Thanks. Nilsen says Tom has seven letters, or the, namely Tom Jump spelled out has seven letters. <laughs> seven is heaven. Is Tom God? George <laughs> Howard Stirrup has six letters in two of the names and seven in one are you heaven's devil howard well seven does have some uh, pretty interesting qualities uh, like i say i'll be making a more detailed video and putting it on my channel in about two or three weeks hopefully um but just to answer his question i suppose betterly um there are historical interpretations like i say in the bible and the quran and there's also primary observations, experiments like the star in a jar that can help us visualize uh, the different dimensions and the entirety of our earth, our reality. So, yeah, there's, there's experiments and there's also historical interpretations and constructions. So, you know, you can ignore it or you can come to a similar conclusion, I'm sure, with logic and time. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Raz Putis, let me know if I'm pronouncing that right, says, appreciate that. James is an absolute giga chat. Bless your heart. This one coming in from Notion Slave says, is this the, well, we got that one. This one from Ozian Talks says, is Terry Pratchett God for creating the great Atuin and the disc world? Is that for me? I think so. Uh, no, uh, and um, obviously not, but uh, yeah, great movie. <laughs> This one coming in from Robin Nils and says, James equals intelligent. Yes. Designed? No. Rather sculpted out of the sharpest material this crazy world can provide us. Love this channel. Thanks for your kind words, Robin. That's embarrassing. This is uh, Wes Warlock says, thanks for setting up these debates. Always great topics. Thanks for your support. All credit to the guests as they are the lifeblood of the channel. If you haven't yet, check out their links right now. You can open up, you can even open up, if you're worried, you're like, well, I want to watch the debate though, James. If you're watching live, you can open up a new tab and put the guest links in those new tabs. And then you can check them out right after the debate gets done being live. Victor says, Howard, isn't Tom's existence compelling evidence? Intelligent design is false. <laughs> that's probably the best argument i've heard all night 
This one coming in from Rasputis says a random boulder in the woods can be a table. Uh oh. Yeah, that's a good point. But guess what? That random boulder's still been designed. <laughs> On my side, we just stopped streaming. So I'm going to just budge. Don't worry. Uh, people will see the stream is live on modern day debate but unfortunately it'll be chopped into two different pieces very embarrassing but this one coming in from do appreciate it well actually we'll give everybody a chance to catch up <clears throat> encoder problem for obs let me just check and see that the stream is showing I don't think we lost a connection. I think we should still have a good connection. Let's see. What a day. Yeah, I'd uh, shovel my car out of the street twice. Hey, Tom. Oh, what? Sorry to, hear, sorry to hear that, mate. Thanks, while appreciate we're it. Wait, while we're waiting, um, would you be interested in having a rematch about this same topic, maybe no. in a month or two? Because no. I can prepare much more evidence in no. for five. Absolutely not. No, not unless I'm scared. Paid. If you pay me, are you you're scared of uh, seeing new information? I'm scared of losing your more brain cells. Uh, that's fair enough. Let me see if this works. I'm going to actually close OBS and then reopen it. See if. I haven't had that happen in a while. Yeah, I think it truth. happens every time OBS does like an update or a patch or something. You have to download the patch, and it usually happens at least once after that. Uh, that so might I, be it. This is a newer version of OBS. I think this should do the trick. At least on OBS, it shows like it's working. So let me just check and see if it's showing on the home page from Modern Database. There it is. Okay. If you, if you pay me $75, my debate, Pete, then I'll do a rematch. <clears throat> That's up to James. I can get someone else to debate me, I'm sure, if James isn't willing to pay you. This one coming up. You can pay him. This one coming in from Ozzy and Tox <laughs> says, Smillo says, I have now lost five euros. I don't know what that was from. Super but chat. Smillo, let us know. Oh, I think they're just because it's like a referring to their own super chat being yep. five euros. Yep. This one free from P. Bathlu says, Mr. Stirrup, please describe the secret society you were a part of. P. Bathlu. Thank you. Maybe the same as what Tom's in. Um, I'm a, I was a Freemason for three years and I got to the third degree. And then I realized that the grand architect of the universe that they're talking about isn't the creator. He's a deceiver. He only designs and calculates and uh, the, all the mathematical equations that confuse and brainwash and hypnotize people can't be demonstrated like Einstein and Stephen Hawking and many other scientists admitted, uh, like we can't prove in primary observations. So yeah, we're, we're literally stuck with th theories and calculations and we're being brainwashed to ignore stuff that we do know um, like I said, that everything needs everything that's designed needs a designer. So it's quite, quite interesting time. You got it. And those of you who are watching live, it cut off. I don't know why, but OBS just all of a sudden had an, an encoder error. And maybe it's because it's a new download, as Tom mentioned. So this one coming in from, but don't worry, we didn't read any questions while we were disconnected. We we're saving those for once everybody was uh, potentially back. So we do have some people watching live. 60 Second Skeptic says, question for both guests. Are your views accepted and backed, backed by mainstream peer-reviewed science or rejected? Mine are accepted. Yeah. Even like I said, even though we've got physical evidence reproducible all over the world that the evolution timeline is not true, but from the petrified organs, even though we've got evidence that there's no curvature and there's no way to prove <laughs> Earth's motion, but there is logical sense that what we see is happening, that the sun and the moon are moving around us. Even though we have lots of evidence, we can't get it peer reviewed because all of the scientists are under peer pressure 
by the establishment that gives them the PhDs and their funds and their grants. And Tom can deny it as much as he wants, but we've all seen how much uh, censorship real scientists and real doctors suffered throughout the supposed pandemic that we only saw on media, not in reality. But there you go. Trust the science, Tom. Don't verify it, just trust it. You got it. And this one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Thunderstorm says, what if the Big Bang is a cognate for God? Let me look up what cognate means. In other words, like when God say, let there be light, that was the Big Bang. I can work with that. The Quran talks about um, Allah speaking uh, life into existence uh, and that it was just uh, air and matter in water. And the Bible talks about uh, let there be light and that there was water above and water below. So it suggests, like I said, the experiment star in a jar is uh, the most uh, accurate depiction of our reality and that it's multidimensional, which is why people can't prove the a flat earth but we can easily debunk a globe if we if we bother to look which is why i offered ten thousand, and no one won the ten thousand in three years on national television hoorah you got it this one coming in from do appreciate your question samir farsane says you jump if you believe that men made math how come we just discovered the hidden infinite mind-boggling Mandelbrot fractals that amazed every mathematician. Uh, can, if we create a system of symbols, we don't know the consequences of all the system of symbols. And so we'll always be able to discover more different kinds of patterns that we haven't discovered yet because systems have infinite patterns. Even though if we invented the symbols, it doesn't mean we know necessarily all the different combinations of those symbols. You got it. This one also from Samir says, T-Jump, you need to be honest. We don't really know if real pi is irrational. We, in all caps, we don't know yet how to measure a curved surface. Pi measures polygons. What, what, pi doesn't measure anything. Pi is a relationship between the circumference of a circle. It's not about measuring a circle. Um, you're right. We don't know exactly what kind of number pi is, but it doesn't matter. It's like so. You got it. And can, I add, can I add to that, James? Sure. Uh, just quickly, the, we need two uh, pi to make a whole perfect circle, a perfect life cycle. And we see two pies in the sky. We see the sun doing perfect oh, circles God. and we see the moon also doing perfect circles. And like I say, there's a lot of uh, a lot of information in pi. If people couldn't see it in the screenshots, uh, from the video now, I will be uploading the video to my channel and there's lots more information to come. I see two pies in my oven. Does that, is that proof of God? It's proof that there's two pies in your oven, but you're denying that there's two things in our sky. You're thinking that they're in outer space. Ooh, you're fanatic. Anton Gomez says, Mr. Modern A Debates, how dare you close the stream mid sentence? I hope the super chat teases you a lesson. Thanks for your support. <laughs> we appreciate it, that Anton. Yeah, we like we're still figuring out the tech after four and a half years. This one from Trevorn Wright says, is there any reason to think that random patterns that appear in nature is evidence of intelligent design? And if so, why not demonstrate how it works? Howard. <laughs> OK, obviously, like Tom, you didn't really watch the video, <laughs> because if you saw the video, you'd see that there is nothing random in numbers like this pi sequence, like the phi sequence, which I'll, I'll show in the next debate. Um, there's nothing random about numbers and there's nothing random about nature. There's only mutations and mutations come from our bad choices. When we've got free will and we choose to use it wrong, we cause distortion in this perfect uh, ecosystem. And that distortion causes mutations throughout nature. Thank you. You got it. This one coming in from, do you appreciate it? The ungoogle of ungoogleable man says george if the earth is flat and the sun goes around the earth why does mars do a loop in the sky in other words retrogrades over time can you make a model 
Yes, like I said, I don't believe that Earth is flat. Flat is two-dimensional. I believe Earth is higher than a three-dimensional shape. The Bible, the Quran especially, says that Earth is seven dimensions. Um, that, Like I said, there's seven colors in the rainbow, seven music notes, seven days in a week. There's lots of sevens uh, everywhere. And um, my main point was that there's, uh, yeah, so there's seven spirits spoken about in the Bible. Uh, so I imagine that when God said, let there be light, there is seven different expressions in that statement that give us seven dimensions, which is why the star in a jar is a bubble in water. And there's lots of different um, light coming out of it. And that tells me that the Mars and uh, the sun are like electrons and protons in a macro atom, our atmosphere. Like they said, the moon is in our atmosphere. So they're hinting at you there. My poop was seven it. ounces today. This one coming in from, oh, actually a quick housekeeping thing. If you love science debates, folks, have to tell you, if you'd love to be in one of these debates, want to let you know, you can email us at moderndaydebate at gmail.com. So that's just the name of the channel and podcast. No spaces, no hyphens. It's just modern day debate at gmail.com let us know as we are looking for new people who are interested in debates on science topics in particular like creation evolution whether or not the earth is flat whether or not the sun is at the center of the solar system whether or not the titanic really sank anything that has to do with you could say things that you might use the natural science to argue for one way or another this one coming in from edward j peters says howard explain the belt of venus on a flat earth model <laughs> I'm not a flat earther, but as I've seen Venus um, before the sunrise in a blue sky, when the sun's clearly behind it situated and we can see Venus glowing very bright, bright as a star. Uh, and we can also make the same observation at different times of the year when the sun's setting, just after the sunset, we can see Venus uh, bright while the sun's behind it, showing that Venus emits its own light. Like I say, it's an energy uh, source it's uh, giving out frequencies like the star in a jar not a flat earth um, we're looking up at something that could be a projection we're looking at something that is probably in a higher dimension we're seeing a reflection or like i say a shadow which is why i asked tom what kind of evidence would he accept from a higher dimension because we can only look at shadows or draw shadows of a three-dimensional cube on paper we have to do a shadow in 2d so it's the same thing as what i was saying in my video and pretty much all the way through i hope it makes more sense with time and i hope that the video i make will be a little bit more uh, simple to understand thank you for your questions this, this one coming in from 60 second skeptic says george what's the best novel testable prediction that you can cite to back up your predictions or methods can you give a specific example just one evidence for intelligent design would be that somebody has to i've said this a million times everybody's said it a million times it's simple if you see something that's been created it normally has a creator if somebody can show me the opposite if somebody like tom can present counter evidence then we've got a real debate but until there's counter evidence i'm literally showing all the evidence in the world but because tom's made his mind up over theories that can be debunked by biogeology and globe lie experiments then he has nothing left to stand on as he admitted without evolution there is no alternative logic uh, explanation for creation of life thank you this one coming in from will stewart 365 says tom will you ever buy a new chair that has been well designed um if you pay me a sufficient amount of money this phone from Matt Lee says, are the two pies in the sky held up by seven flat turtles? Like I said, the turtle is an algorithm for how the world clock, like I say, a world clock, because it's like an atmosphere, uh, atom, atmosphere is like an atom. There's electrons and protons. Everything's being kept uh, under time and space, and it's all um, viewable. Um, as we see in experiments like star in a jar so so yeah there's two pies in the sky that we can observe 
but they might not be physically where we see them. We're just making observations. We haven't been measured or touched anything, so, but uh, I imagine that it's more close to what we see than what we're being told. Thank you. You got it. With that, I want to say thanks so much for tuning in with us, folks. That's all we have for questions from the live chat. I want to say our guests are linked in the description. So if you haven't checked out their links, now is a great time to open up a couple of tabs because you can put their links in those tabs. I'm going to have a quick post credits, you could say, little scene on upcoming debates in just a moment. It's going to be short and sweet, so stick around for that. And in the meantime, I want to say a huge thank you to our guests, Tom and Howard. It's been a true pleasure. Thank you, James. And thank you, Tom. Yep. See you guys later. Stick around, folks. We'll be back in just.